Good afternoon and welcome to a spectacular fall afternoon here at Hudson Fields, Hard Hazen Union High School in Hartford, Vermont. Griff getting a shot of good old Buffalo Mountain. I'd say it's just about, uh, it might even be just a tiny bit past peak, wouldn't it, Griff? But still spectacular. Maybe a day or two past peak, but this is the nicest weather we've had in the last week or so yeah. here. So. Warm temps and a little bit of a breeze. Your Hazen Union Wildcats getting ready to take on the Oxbow Olympians today. Uh, action once again coming to you live from Hudson Fields. Uh, Hazen girls coming with a record of two and nine. Oxbow with a record of six, four, and one. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Griff on camera. Our sponsors today: Willie Store 533-2621, open every day 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Hardwick Village Restaurant open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days. Breakfast all day. Cats, uh, Lady Cats had gotten a victory over uh, Fairfax uh, a week ago today in the in a homecoming action. Then they went up to Swanton, played Mississippi High School this past Wednesday the ninth, lost three zip. So, uh, but you know they've been in a lot of games and uh, looking to be into this game, get something going here towards the end of the season. Not many games left this coming Thursday. The uh, I'm looking for the date here, Tuesday. Excuse me. This coming Tuesday, the 15th, they will play Danville, last home game. That'll be senior night. So, Griff, I'm going to have to bust down at halftime from the roof here because I'll have a senior out there. Hard oh, to yeah. And then they wind their season up under the lights on Friday the 18th at Winooski. So we got a couple games left. Cats looking to build a little, build a little momentum going into the playoffs. But, boy, what a spectacular day. And time. Boys over in Fairfax, playing Fairfax today as we speak. And I realize we don't carry any of this live. It's all recorded. But I like to treat it as it's live. And the up last update from my wife has us up by a score of 2-1. We'll see if we can get a final on that. All right. Good job, boys. Opening tip just moments away. <laughs> Lady Cat soccer action. Hudson Fields, Hazen Union High School in Hardwick, Vermont. <laughs> Try and match up some names and numbers with these Oxio players. This is number 11, Melanie Neal with the tip. Back to Grace Nostrant, I'll go with. I meant to ask a few pronunciations, but they looked fairly manageable as I was looking down through it. Griff, it's taken me the whole season, but I realize I can see the names without my glasses on. <laughs> Thank you, John Sperry, for using a large font on this <laughs> program. See what the Lady Cat girls can come up with. Alexis Christensen gives chase on the far side. Ball out, white throw. Lily, castles made of sand. You have a blue throw. Little Castle on the throw in. Lady Cat Girls wearing the pink stockings, I guess you could call that. Is that what those are called? Uh, man, I always thought they were just called like soccer socks, socks or something like well, that. They're, they're, <laughs> we they're wearing, sporting the pink apparel today. Uh, October, of course, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They wanted to bring attention to that. Ladies, please, please take care of yourself. Annual checkups. Guys, too. Believe it or not, Griff, Peter Chris, former drummer, original drummer of the band Kiss, was diagnosed with a male form of breast cancer. So. Hmm. Almost gets through the Oxbow defense. High kick to midfield. Who's going to come down with it? And I'll tell you, I was over across the field talking with John for a little bit before the game. This Oxbow team, a lot of depth, a lot of players. Tall girls as well. A lot of height on this team. Macy the male girl trying to go through the double team. Doesn't get it. Back, Joey Hall plays up. Joey towards the side. Once again, towards the side, out of bounds, white throw right in front of us. Emma DeGouche 
on the throw in, a junior for the Olympians. Joey with the header. Allie tried to play that one off herself. Ball down, there's Patel giving chase. Defense plays it by her. Gabbery, Ali, Gabbery down. Lefty Jeffrey. Cleared out with authority by Zoe Hislop. Ball at midfield. Is that Kai? Macy trying to work through. This Olympians defense is a, they have taken a page out of the Julius Rosenthal book. They are a wall of defense right there. Not much penetration. Patel, go over. Offsides. Just a step outside, step offsides was Alexis Christensen. Although if Jimmy Bellavance were here, he'd say she was on. <laughs> she was right on line. <laughs> Free kick, Olympians. About four minutes into the match. A lot of it played right here at center field. Neither team really much of an offensive effort yet. Oxbow plays up through. Aspen Longmore. That's a great name for a, soccer, for a girl soccer player. I like that. I think Aspen's a great name. Gets a turn, shot on, Little Red Machine wide. Long more, I wanted to get there. I wasn't saying lawn more, long <laughs> more. But I, I love that name. I love that name. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Aspen Longmore. Aspen. I love it. Note to self, when the first grandchildren come along, if it's a girl, suggest Aspen. <laughs> Emma Goose on the throw. And I did have the Olympians coach, Dan Thomas, check names and numbers, so I know there's no mix-up here either. Nice. I would hate to give her all the credit and have it be another girl, you know? Nice guy. Talked to him for a couple minutes on the other side, along with his assistant, whose name I didn't get. Header down, across, looking to clear. Lauren Thomas getting the start today. Lauren, a sophomore for the Lady Cats. Shot in, Leah White. Olympians on the corner kick. The most exciting play in all of soccer. Grace Nostrant. Header out. Lefty Jeffrey gives chase. Middle of the field. Macy Moeller's got a little bit of room. See what she can do with it. Tries to push up through the defense. Gets by one, gets by two. Right there with her, though, is Emma DeGouche. Gets the turn back. Threat thwarted. Ooh, Jeffrey has that one go off the side of her foot. Lily Castle there to back her up. Nice play. Leah White inside. Zoe Hislop gives chase. Zoe out there trading paint with Aspen Longmore. Grace with the throw. Since I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, I'm just going to go with Grace. Degouche against Patel. Nice footwork. Inside, Zoe has that one go under her foot. It's right behind her, though. Lefty Jeffrey clears it out. Well, then they throw in White.
Throw in Leah White. In the middle, there's Kai. Kai Gilbert. Moves inside. Can't get it by. This defense is tough. Tough, tough. Zoe. Back up to the middle. Turn. Believe it or not, Griff, I have a bee flying around me. <laughs> Zoe Hislop. High spinner. Over there on the side. Ooh. Nice play. I believe that was Ariana Bowles. Came in. Comes Moeller to goose right with her. Oh, that's White. I mean, White. Leah White. Moeller up ahead. Blocked down by Bowles. Olympians look to cross, blocked down, Lily Castle. Corner, kick, Olympians. So I think, Griff, uh, we have the girls' senior night Tuesday. I believe the boys' senior night is Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, corner kick, cross, taken down. Cleared out, back in, shot, that, ooh, I thought that was curling in. From up here, that shot looked like it was curling in. That was one of those dangerous ones. Yeah, right? definitely. Um, I mean, I think it's obvious that the Lady Cats will go on the road for the playoffs. I'm not sure where the boys are in the seeds. So this could, barring a possible boys hosting a playoff game, could be our final week of uh, hosting Wildcat slash Lady Cats. Lady Cat, Gentleman Cat, <laughs> the gentleman soccer. Cats. Yeah. Where has the season gone? Well, it's been pretty good. We've, we've. I think the girls team has been more of a like a like a work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, think started out pretty slow, but they're really kind of coming together they now. They are coming together. I think the future is pretty bright for Lady Cat soccer. And the boys, man, are they gelling? They're, they're peaking at just about the right time. Yeah. I think so far this year they have won all of their home games except the Winooski game. I believe I don't have a program in front of me, but you could be right. So if they host, and here's another interesting fact. In the four years that I've done this up here, we have never been able to tape a home playoff game. They always seem to fall on days that are Joey Hall cleared out. Could have been trouble for the Little Red Machine. Um, they've always fallen on incredibly bad weather days. Mm -hmm. Snow, rain, a mix of snow and rain. That's right. I remember the um, boys' playoff game last year. Yeah, it was, the weather conditions were horrible. Um, I mean, the field was okay, but the weather conditions were horrible. Moeller trying to get through. Didn't go. Batal sticking with her. Batal. Looking for Kai. Chipped up ahead. That was more of a chunk by Christensen. Man, Batao, she is everywhere out here. Batao. Once again, trying to make a play. Gabri going hip to hip with Bowles. So... First off, we'll hope for a boys hosting a playoff game mm -hmm. here at the uh, Hudson Fields. And secondly, we hope for decent weather so we can come up and do it. I would love to call a playoff game. If not, I will be across the way under the canopy with Athletic Director John Sperry. I remember it rained, and then it turned to snow. I mean, it rained hard in the first half last year. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I remember a couple, <laughs> couple years ago... Um, uh, girls hosted a game here, and the same deal. Wind howled. It snowed. Last year when they traveled down to Oxbow, the game that uh, that ended up ousting them out of the playoffs was played in, in terrible conditions. We need a day like today. I remember being 
bundled up in a sweatshirt and a jacket and drinking coffee and still being really cold and just feeling so bad for the boys out there trying to play soccer. Yeah. It was yeah. brutal. And the other thing I remember about last year was one of those rare occurrences, Hislop clears it out, where both our gentlemen and Lady Cats teams played their playoff games on the same day at the same time. Uh, girls were up in Fairfax playing. Just like today, the girls were up in Fairfax playing. I do not remember who the boys played. It was a team from down south. Twin Mountain comes to mind, maybe, or, or somebody like that. Um, but the girls were playing over in Fairfax. They ended up winning their game that day, which sent them to Oxbow uh, here against these Olympians. That's right. They uh, they upset Fairfax. Yes. Lauren Thomas, nice block down on Grace. And I remember looking down through the bracket, and we were the only school that was playing both our games on mm. the same day, and being you know a little upset. But I guess if that's the way. The schedule falls, that's the way it falls, but right. still too bad, you know, that... Especially for you as a parent of players on both teams. On both teams, and, and, you know, the teams like to root for each other, too, you know, especially come playoff time. You know, the girls want to be here for the boys' game, the boys want to be there for the girls' game, and, yeah, definitely split the parents up. And, uh... Throw in Bethany Conway. Looking for Moeller. Moeller, middle of the field. Taken down with authority, and that'll, that will draw the whistle. Was that Grace that took her down? I think it was number nine. Number nine. Number nine is Rachel Spear. Couldn't tell if it was a nine or an eight. That'll give the Cats a free kick. Gabbery. She'll shoot it from here. Goes for the short shot. Over to Moeller. Oh, excuse me. I, but yeah. Shot on. Ball loose. Nobody there to capitalize. Was that Cassidy Cochran that got that shot off, I think, believe? Mm -hmm. Wildcat boys up 3-1 over Fairfax today. And a game being played at the same time as this one in Fairfax. That score courtesy of my wife, who's at the game. Here come the Olympians on the attack now. And that was the first serious shottage that your Lady Cats got at Melina Simmons, the keeper for the Olympians. Cassidy Cochran getting a nice shot in there, I believe. That was Cassidy, right? I think it was, yeah. Ooh, Conway plays that one up over, misses. Nice save by Kimball. The little red machine there to back up her defense. I mean, the one thing that sort of gets lost up here, and I noticed this, I, I went back and I watched a couple of the games, Griff. I rarely do, mm -hmm. just because, I don't know, time. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, I did go back and I watched a couple of the home, parts of a couple of the homecoming games. Um, and I noticed that uh, a lot of times when I get names and numbers mixed up, the benefit you have of you've got a lot closer view. Yeah. You know, you're looking through uh -huh. the, the lens finder, and you're able to kind of get up there and zero right in. I'm back, you know, a distance. So if, if ever I have misidentified anybody, given anybody credit or, you know, anything like that, it's simply because I'm trying to do the best I can with, with the viewage that I've got up here. And I appreciate Griff always being able to get those close-up shots so we can – correct any mistakes and make sure everybody gets credit with what they do. Shot up ahead. Simmons going to come out and play this one. Goes off the side of her foot. Oxbow brings it down. Out of bounds. <laughs> then when you're dealing with girls with long hair over their numbers, that makes it even more difficult. Yeah, it is. It makes it a little tough.
Lily Castle, boot up, middle, taken down. Oxbow, clear it out to Oxbow. Back to midfield. Blue throw. Columbus Day weekend. Monday, the Canadian Thanksgiving. Hayes and player goes down, whistle. That's the second time that Macy's been knocked to the ground. Jumps right back up though. Joey Hall, defense way up. But I guess they can, because technically right now the Oxbow player is off sides. If it happens to get played up. Out of bounds, Moeller, white throw. Emmett Agouche on the throw. Blocked out, Emma Parkin. Are we going to have a corner? Corner kick, Gabbery. Let's see what the Cats can do. Ball up. Down in front of the goal. Still loose. Finally poked up by McKenna Simmons. Did I say Molina the first time? It's McKenna. Their keeper is McKenna Simmons. Maybe I should put my glasses on. <laughs> About halfway through the first half. <laughs> but I hold it just right in the sun. I get the shade. I can't really see it. If I hold it out here and down, you know, it's McKenna Simmons. I apologize if I did get it wrong. Uh, sponsors today, I certainly don't want to get these wrong. Willie Store, 533-2621, open every day, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the Hardwick Village Restaurant, open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days, breakfast all day. Once again, our games, I believe right from the start, Griff, have been completely sold out sponsorship-wise. Yep. We thank everybody for sponsoring Wildcat Soccer. Be they the ladies or the gentlemen. Great community support. Nice crowd here for the game today. And there's that B again. Yeah. That's over around you now. I, uh. Who'd have thunk it? Trying to make, you know, no sudden moves over here for him. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren Thomas out. Uh, Zoe Hislop comes in. Conway couldn't quite get the foot on that. McKenna Smith, throw in. Midfield, or mid, middle of the field is what I'm trying to say. Oxbow, Christensen knocks that away, nice play. Lily, castles made of sand. Moeller, can she penetrate the defense? Double team. Turnaround, taken away, Degouche. Christensen, trying to get it to Kai. Christensen says, here, I'll take a shot from here. McKenna Simmons. Freshman keeper, so a battle of freshman keepers here today. Our own goalie, Emily Kimball, the sister of the big red machine, Ben Chris and the little red machine, has come along well for the Lady Cats this year. You can see her gaining confidence with each game and each stop. Cochran trying to knock that one through. Back, Lefty Jeffrey. 
Out of bounds, throw. Ellen Hart over there on the play as well. Throw in Grace. Cochran comes over. Tries to make a play on Chloe McIntyre. Cochran back to Conway. Here's Grace working against Hislop. Turnaround shot, long shot, slow roller. Easy scoop for the little red machine. Don't let him play. Be a white throw. As my phone continues to buzz, Finn Rooney, Isaiah Baker scoring for your Wildcat boys. Score now 5-1 against Fairfax. All right, those are the messages we want to get. Huh? That's right. <laughs> Although... You know what, Griff? I'm thinking if I get a message that McDonald Lanfear scores, <laughs> yeah. I, I may still just have to do the Lord of the Dance up here. You know, I mean, I said I would do it. I didn't yeah. say I would do it only if it was here. Yeah, that's true. So. That's true. Met Finn Rooney's mom. Uh, boys played Oxbow last week. Or was it earlier this week? I they, think it was earlier this week, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yep. They, they all, uh, the days all blend together. Anyway, <laughs> the boys played the Oxbow Olympians recently, and uh, I got to talk to Finn Rooney's mom, and it stands for a few minutes. What a great lady. <laughs> Just an awesome lady. And she knows all of the Ferris Bueller references. Oh, good. <laughs> um, and her and his brother, just great people. What a, what a, what a really cool family. Lefty Jeffrey trying to make the play. Gabby Stanchow out there now. Stanchu, excuse me. Stanchu. Shot up. Wide. Little red machine lets it roll out. We'll have a Hazen goal kick. No score. 14-25 left to go here in the first half. I would say, Griff, of everybody, we've probably had the better offensive chances in this game. You know, Simmons has actually had a couple saves she's had to make. He had the one bobbler down here that we couldn't didn't have anybody in on. Um, Kimball, for the most part, the defense in front of her playing well. Yeah. I'd Keeping her safe. That. I'd agree with that. The, the defense here um, for Hazen is doing pretty well. Um, and the Oxbow defense, uh, you know, has been playing exceptional. I'm really a testament that we got down there and got a couple of shots off. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think uh, maybe Oxbow has had more possession. Maybe the ball's been, you know, on Yeah, in our end more, yes. Right. But Definitely. at the same time, the chances for Oxbow have been kind of yep. kept to a minimum. The quality of our shots have been a little, a little more on. Yeah. Zoe Hislop, header to the middle of the field. That was Maverick colliding with Cassidy Cochran. Saw Maverick, uh, I think it was after the homecoming game. She told her how much we loved her name. <laughs> Shot on. Little Red Machine knocks that one to the side. Nice save. Wow. There's a... A definite quality shot by the Olympians that uh, caught the Little Red Machine off balance. But, man, she made a nice play to get that hand out and knock it out of bounds. And that will give the Olympians the corner kick. But, boy, what a nice, what a nice play. You can see she was sort of off her line, leaning the wrong way. Got back, still managed to get the hand on it.
Corner kick, middle, out of bounds. Goal, kick, Hazen. Eleven fifty-seven and counting. Joey Hall on the goal kick. Up middle of the field. Maverick. Kai up the side. I know why I wanted to go back and watch some of those games. I wanted to see Kai's goal again. I did the same goal. thing. I that, went back and rewatched it a few times. It that was, was great. phenomenal. That was just a phenomenal effort. And I watched the Bavaro play that I was talking about on YouTube, and it was it was one and the same. The, the, the Mark Bavaro reference that I made, the New York Giants. Oh, yeah. And it was, there was, it was a game against the San Francisco 49ers. He basically takes on – he drags the entire defense for like 20 yards with him. Kai takes on three defenders yeah. and gets a shot past the goal. I mean, just a great, great effort. I mean, I, I was trying to find it. I was going through – uh-oh. Trying Talk to get the that. turn. Hazen defense. Oh, that was not good. Nice save, Kimball. Oh, wow. Great save. Got down. Yeah, Wow. Defense in an attempt to clear. Got it right over to the Olympians player who was wide open. Got the shot on. Nice. Once again, nice reflexes by Kimball to get up there and make that save. Uh, what I was going to say, Lance, was that uh, I was trying to find that goal. And I knew it you know, sometime in the first half. So I'm watching and uh, Going through, and they're like, okay, so Kai's got the ball here, but this can't be it because there's probably, you know, there's three defenders in front of her, so no, yeah. it's probably it's probably later. Oh, wait, nope. Yeah. <laughs> she just charges right through him. <laughs> nice pass. Kai on the far side. There's Macy the male girl with it. Going to have a blue throw. That and uh, I think it was Macy's second goal. Mm -hmm. was was a real nice I, I went back I wanted to watch that one again too yeah I remember that was a real nice shot on wide I agree I went back and watched that one too and uh, just a great turn on the ball and a ripper right by Maddie did a really good job in that goal just chasing down you know mm -hmm. uh, trying to run after the ball get, fighting with the defender and then just kind of picking the defender's pocket once the defender kind of thought that she had it and then turning that into a couple of good passes and yeah. getting a really good shot. Really got, good shot. And she got a little nicked up on that, and that's why we were confused as to who scored because, you know, Macy scored, and a couple of girls went over to her, and then everybody went over to, to check on Maddie. Yeah. Joey Hall fighting off Leah White. Middle of the field. Hislip. Boy, this defense has been like a step ahead of us all day, though. Yep. They, they seem to know right where the passes are going. They're beating us to the ball right now. But we were talking about quality shots, and I'll tell you, Oxbow's had two quality shots since we made that comment. I, you know, I, I don't believe in the broadcaster's jinx. But, <laughs> uh, they certainly uh, put on two quality shots right after that. See if the Lady Cats can answer back. 8-10 and ticking. Here in the first half, score 0-0. Your Hazen Union Lady Cats taking on the Oxbow Olympians, making the trip up I-91 from Bradford. Nice school. Mm -hmm. Nice area. I like the Bradford area. Ball dangerous in the middle. Turn around. Joey Hall gets that one out. Joey looking to move the ball up. Is that Maddie? Is that Maddie right there? Maddie Bartlett in? Ball up through. Macy gives chase as well. Plays it back to Simmons. Simmons chooses to kick it up. Stanchu down. Joey Hall, big boots. Big boots. I think Macy was trying to come back on sides.
white throw. Ball through, Kimball out, makes the save. Kind of lurking over here on the near side was a player for Oxbow, whose number I can't see, right? Is it 18? There's another shot up in. Leah White, there she is. White's been right around there just kind of anticipating, you know? I'm going to goosh, middle, of middle. Nice footwork, turnaround. Grace. Juke scabby right out of her cleats just about. Slow roller in. Easy save for the little red machine. Punt. See, there's what I'm saying, that the Oxbow player getting to the gap first, getting to the ball first, setting themselves up for another shot, you know? Ball through, Kimball. Short punt, midfield. Middle of the field. I keep saying, I mean, I mean I'm meaning middle of the field, Griff. Yeah, yeah middle horizontally. Yes. <laughs> Oxbow definitely in control now. Keeping the ball in our end. And it, it's, it's at times like these I kind of worry. You know, you see them, they come and they kind of chip, chip, chip away, and the next thing you know, They either get, you know, a really good shot or something quirky happens or something like that. 4.35 left to go here in the first half. Maddie Bartlett can't quite catch that one. Stanchu out against the Goosh. Pass back in. Nice pass. Melanie Neal. Neal. Looking across. Shot on. Save Kimball. Corner kick, but that was a great shot. Once again, Griff, I'm, I'm worried. Yeah, right. they keep chipping away. Kind of uh, the more times they bring it into the box here, the more. The closer they're getting, the better yep. the shot they're getting. Yep. Defense getting a little tired. They've been playing a lot of defense here the last eight, ten minutes. Here's Moeller. Ball plays off the Olympians player. Still managed to come down with it, though. These girls are really going to keep the ball down. These short passes like this. Maddie Bartlett, let's see if she can get by the defense. Over to Moeller. Moeller up through. Bartlett there. Oh, she nice was onside. Pass. Working against the goose. Nice move. Maddie Bartlett taken out, though. Got to give credit to this defense. Emma Parkin right there. 2.53 left to go in the first half. We'll have a Oxbow goal kick. See if the Cats can come down with some control now. Keep it up in this end again. Try and get some shots of our own. Fairfax scored on a penalty kick, but Isaiah Baker answered that with a goal of his own to make it 6-2. Uh, wow. Throw in, Joey Hall, middle of the field. Moeller was there, so was the Oxbow defense. Hisla back, gives chase. Trying to get that one out. Hard, hard. 
Grace, statue slips, middle of the field, wide open for a shot. Chloe McIntyre, if she could have got a, a turn and a foot on that, she was wide open. Some action back here behind the play, I guess. I didn't see it. I don't know. Was that a, an offside yeah, call, maybe? Possibly, yeah. 120 left to go here in the first half. Looking for our Lady Cats to mount some offense. Shot through. Kimball down. Save. One minute left to go in the half. One minute. Lots of time to sneak up through here and get a goal, but I'll tell you it's going to be a Herculean effort <laughs> to get it past this Oxbow defense. And I heard that last night on a TV show I was watching, and that is the pronunciation. Nice. So we, we were halfway right. That's, yeah. Took us a minute. Ball goes under Melanie Neal. Zoe Hislop there. Stanchu looking to get it up a little bit further. 30, 35 seconds. Going to have to hurry. Bartlett up ahead. Moeller. Three white shirts right there. Gets through. Up the near side. 23 seconds. And forearm shiver by Emma DeGouche to get clear Moeller. Zoe Hislop working against Melanie Neal. There's a long shot. Kimball out. White right there. That'll end the first half. With your Hazen Union Lady Cats and the Oxbow Olympians tied 0-0. Good game. Both teams have had, uh, I would say, once we made the comment about quality shots, Oxbow turned the things around. Yep. And, and kind of really uh, a couple of cheek clenchers there, as I call them. Yeah. But uh, in the end, uh, Emily Kimball with some nice saves and defense playing good in front of her. Um, Got to get a little more out of the offense here. So our sponsors today, Willie Store, 533-2621, open every day, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., and the Hardwick Village Restaurant, open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days, breakfast all day. We'll be back to see you at the start of the second half. Second half action about to get underway here at beautiful Hudson Fields Hazen Union High School in Hardwick, Vermont. Your Hazen Union Lady Cats hosting the Oxbow Olympians this Columbus Day weekend. Score 0-0 at the end of the first half. Uh, Lady Cats had a couple of chances early in the half, and then they played a whole lot of defense the second half of the first half. Last 10, 15 minutes, the Olympians definitely put the pressure on, got some good shots. Emily Kimball made up with some great saves. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Sponsors today, Willie Store, 533-2621, open every day, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the Hardwick Village Restaurant, open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days, breakfast all day. Griff on camera, and he is about to hand the headset off to my broadcast partner. You remember him from all the basketball games this past season, Elliot Kimball, the Big Red Machine. How are you, Elliot? I'm good, Lance. How are you? I am doing good. Let's just put this right in front of your mouth there. And it uh, got to be exciting for you to come back from college and see your sister down there. We have, we have dubbed her the Little Red Machine. All right. <laughs> if that's okay with you. I think that's what she wanted, yeah. <laughs> All right. And, uh, you know, good to have you back, buddy. How you been? Thank you very much. I've been good. Um, co college going well for you? It is, yeah. It's, it's great. Now, you are way out in western uh, Pennsylvania, That's correct? right, yep. Which school? Uh, Waynesburg University. It's down in the southwest corner. And you're going for? History Secondary Education. Nice. Excellent. And you've come home for Columbus Day weekend. Your mom was telling me you guys got in at about 4 a.m. Yep. It's a bit, it was a long drive, was, but we, we made it safely. That was just about the time I got up this morning. I got up at 4.30, so, Oof. and off to work. <laughs> <laughs> so we both, did you get any kind of nap in? or? We, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we, we took turns resting. All right. So what do you see so far, your soccer expertise out here? Well, you know, unfortunately, this is the only game I've been able to watch live. I've been keeping up with the HCTV broadcasts here and there when I can. So thank you for all the good work you guys have been doing. Absolutely. Um, we've got a pretty young core, mostly yeah. uh, a, lot, a lot of freshmen, um, and then a, a good core of juniors too. So hoping we can kind of put it together as we come into the playoffs and – um, I think my sister's been doing all right, getting some saves. Her so. uh, her confidence level from from the first game we saw her playing to now is just tremendous. You know, she she looks that first game she looks so scared. She's looking more and more at ease with everything, making the plays coming out, 
and doing things. Um, she's doing very, very well. She's come a long ways from the beginning. We actually have freshman goalies uh, going at it today. McKenna Simmons is a goalie for the Olympians, a freshman as well. So a battle of the uh, the freshmen out here. And uh, Emily has made, I love the save she made, you know, on that one shot. She was sort of off her line, leaning off balance, came back, got the finger on it to knock it out of bounds. That was terrific work. Yeah, it was pretty big. So. A lot of this game has been played in the midfield. It has. It has. Here's Maddie Bartlett. Trying to make a play. The other thing we were noticing is the Oxbow defense has been just unbreakable, really. I mean, we got a couple of opportunities early in the first half down there. Uh, but they've been really unbreakable. Our defense played a lot of defense towards the end of that first half. We wondered if they were starting to get a little tired. And uh, we'd like to see them keep the ball up here and put a little pressure on Simmons for a while. Yeah, neither team with too many cracks on goal. As the, as the second half continues to close, chances are going to be more and more valuable. Now, did you play soccer at all in school, or were you strictly basketball? I played soccer my freshman and sophomore year. Okay. And then just concentrated right on b-ball. Yeah. Now, are you going to be playing down at uh, college? Or? Um, I don't think I'll be able to this year, unfortunately. Oop. Shot on why? Yeah. I would imagine with this, with with what you're going for, a lot of studying. They keep me very busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's it's good. I'm learning a lot. Cool. And how is uh, how is life down there in Southwestern? Are you are you as far far enough west that they call soda pop? Out yes. There? Oh yes. They yeah. Do? It's it's a uh, it's not not correct. I think it's soda, but they. Uh, I'm I'm an unusual calling it soda there. I know you get out to the Midwest and and it's it's all pop. You, you know Minnesota. You get out to Minnesota and out through that area. Yeah. It's uh, it's strictly pop. And they call whoopie pies uh, gobs. Really? I don't I don't know what they're doing down there. Huh. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So at, at at college now that you've graduated from Hazen and and you're uh, here we go. Let's see what's going to happen here. Simmons way out. Not afraid to play that one way out of the of the box. Um, I'm going to slip into interview mode here for a moment. Um, what have you taken from Hazen that, that you felt was the most valuable thing that you gained here to college with you? Um, I really learned how to how to study and work hard in school, um, which which has pay, paid dividends for the first round of exams there at college. Um, so that that was, that was big. I know a lot of a lot of my friends at college, from other schools, didn't have to work too hard in high school, um, and so I was I was better prepared there. And then um, a big part of high school sports, I think, is learning how to make connections. And uh, with your team, you only can go as far as you go as a team in terms of uh, building a community. So um, we all are are really good friends there, and we we work for each other, help each other out. Nice, nice. And other than your family, what have you missed the most? From Hardwick? Uh, honestly, the fall weather, because it's still pretty warm down there, mm. and the leaves haven't started to turn yet, and it's October, and I'm, I'm missing the, <laughs> the, the brisk the brisk walks. I'll tell you, if you'd have been here last weekend for homecoming, it was, I mean, today is awesome. Today yep. is incredible. But last weekend, it was a little bit cooler. The sun was out. The leaves were really out, and uh, it was just absolutely phenomenal yeah. here. I heard both teams got W's on the, on the home turf. Yeah, yeah, excellent stuff. So you're back here for Columbus Day, then you go back to PA. When's your next, your probably Thanksgiving, Christmas? or Probably won't be able to make it for Thanksgiving, but I will be here for Christmas, and maybe we'll slip up and catch a basketball game with you. Excellent. Well, Elliot Kimball, the big red machine. I want to let you get back down to friends and family and everything. I saw a certain girl with long blonde there. I don't want to keep you from either down there. And, uh, but I just want to thank you very, very much for taking the time to come up and chat with us today. Thank you for having me. Elliot Kimball, the big red machine. Thanks. All right. Awesome. Thanks to Elliot for coming yeah, up. Yeah, that's excellent stuff. Six minutes gone here in the second half. 34 minutes left to go in the game. Score, t score still 0-0. Zero, zero. And uh, I tell you, Simmons came way out to, to make that one play on the ball. And uh, what, we've seen a couple shots go wide on Emily down there? Yep. Yeah, and it looks like, uh, well, it looks like Hazen's playing a little bit more aggressive than they were in the first half, at least so far in those first yeah. few minutes here, which is really good. Yeah, I've seen the ball up in... Uh, the Ox win. Wow, there's a shot right in the back. I, that was from across the field here, and I could see that. 
Kai's double tough. Hislop nudges it ahead. Bartlett gets it over to Moeller. Maverick is going to try and get a foot on that. Maverick. Murphy. Oh, swing and a miss. There's a, yeah, let's whistle, please. Thank you. Macy's been all over the field. She's been playing defense, being way up front on either side of the field. Uh, just really kind of, I think Coach Bissett is really letting her just do whatever she wants, you know? Freelance. Yeah. I think that, you know, if you have a player that's really skilled like her, that's, that's kind of a good way to be, you know? Absolutely. Just let her decide where she needs to be. And, and you've still got uh, Kai up front, and you've got Maddie Bartlett and Alexis Christensen up front, too. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, we've seen him try some different combos. I mean, uh, that's the other thing. You know, first-year coach Harry Bissett, uh, I only coached one year, and it was five, six boys basketball. But I'll tell you, I learned a lot about what to and most particularly what not to do uh, in so many situations. It's such a learning curve. And, I mean, Harry's knowledge of the game is, you know, impeccable. Mm -hmm. But when you come with mixing and matching personalities and skills and and young players and, and seasoned players, yep. I, I don't envy him. I don't envy him. It is, it is a uh, monumental task to stand over on that sideline and try to think it all through, yeah. and a lot of it on the fly, you know? Yeah, pretty much, as, um, you know, as the season goes or yeah. as a game goes. I mean, pretty easy to stand up here and armchair quarterback things, to go down on the sideline, watch it live, and, and try and make some sense of it, you know? It's tough. It's a tough game, and, and I greatly admire anybody who puts the effort and mo the time the time that these coaches put in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What I've uh, heard from uh, Harry's current significant other is that uh, he spends a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always on your mind. You yeah. Know, even when you're not practicing or, or, or scrimmaging or with games or coming up with plans, still they're on your mind. Oh, there's a play through. Joey Hall knocks that one. Is it going to go... Off the end, going to give the Olympians a corner kick. I've noticed things have gotten a little bumpier out here, too. A little more paint being traded. A little chippy. A little yeah. chippy, yeah. So, corner kick. Corner kick taken by Emma Parkin. We saw her make a couple of great defensive plays in the first half. Shot, middle. Gonna get that back to the outside. Turn it up. Maddie Bartlett. Bartlett. Nice play up ahead if Moeller can catch up to it. Ball taken to the side. Moeller. Defensive player right there for the Olympians. Joey Hall gets it up. Moeller looking to get around. These defenders, they're like blocks of granite up there. Maddie Bartlett, and they have incredible footwork. Fantastic footwork. I mean, they are they are truly the lords of the dance <laughs> with what they can do with their feet. Yeah. Lordesses of the dance. Throw in Maddie Fredella for the Olympians. Turn. Grace, middle of the field. Chloe McIntyre back. This is Bowles, Ariana Bowles. Christensen. McKenna Simmons. Trots over to the other side of the field. Ball back, Kai gives chase. <laughs> Go.
goal kick, Oxbow. Final in Fairfax, your Hayes and Wildcat boys have defeated the Bullets by a score of 6-2. to two. Realize I've been sort of remiss in sending my wife scores from this game. <laughs> well, <laughs> take a moment to. It's not a lot to uh, lot to update. Yeah, on it so <laughs> exactly. Far. Griff, did I give our sponsors a read at the start of the second half? I don't think I did. I think I was introing Elliot. Right. So let's talk about our sponsors here. Definitely, we, we could not be us without them. Sponsors today, Willie's Store, 533-2621, open every day, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., and the Hardwick Village Restaurant, open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days, breakfast all day. Once again, thank you to all our sponsors. A complete sellout of lady and gentleman cat games, soccer games, this fall. Oxbow, once again, applying the pressure. Fredella playing against Conway. Conway goes down. Fredella stands her ground. Going to give the kick as, as Bethany. I think, if anything, she was trying to catch her balance on Fredella. Shot. Knocked down. Joey with the defensive play. That's Parkin. And once again, the Lady Cats wearing the pink socks today in reference to October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Once again, we urge Shot through, played out by Zoe Hislop, Olympians corner kick. We urge uh, everyone to be checked regularly, maintain. I mean, health maintenance, such a key. But uh, definitely the ladies, and it can strike men as well. As I talked in the, in the uh, first half, original drummer for the group KISS, Peter Chris, was diagnosed with uh, male breast cancer. Beat it, got it taken care of, but nonetheless, it's, it's not something you hear about or think about a lot, but it does exist. Muller looking to move up through. She's got Cochran up ahead, Bartlett on the near side, Ball on the far side. He's in defense once again. Trying to clear it up midfield. See if they can get the turn against this Olympians defense. Get something going here. Alexis Christensen gives chase. Near side. Lily Castle up through. Maddie Bartlett. Trying to get the turn. Played up through by Bowles. Wow, I'm seeing a lot of action out there. Goal, Oxbow. I saw a lot of arms flailing out there. So was, yeah. was that as, as bad through the lens as I <laughs> could see it? There is a, uh, a lot of hand action going on, hands and arms, yeah. Uh, goal sword, was that number eight? Grace, yeah, I hear it now, Grace Nostrand. Just kind of uh, worked her way through the defense. 
rather handily, I'll say. See the referee over there chatting with one of the uh, Olympians players, but hard to tell what happened. There was there was a big scrum of players up there, but all I could see was, like I said, hands and elbows going. Yeah. Olympians playing a little physical now. Kayla Gilbert clears out. Fortunately to the middle of the field. Here's Nostrant again. Grace. Nice save to keep it in by Melanie Neal. Middle of the field. Once again back. Shot on. High. Shot taken by Chloe McIntyre. Joey Hall with the goal kick. Once again, you see the Olympics player jump right in front of us. We could have come away with this, hopefully, maybe. But definitely getting beaten to the ball. Mm -hmm. Olympians, you hear that play through it a lot, you know, play through the ball. And they're definitely beating us to it and playing through the ball. And we'll give credit to, to Grace as well, hands or not. Um, it was a great play to, to keep it, you know, keep control of it with her feet and get it through the, the defense to get the shot on. Yep. Ended up just a uh, straight on goal. Not much that the uh, Little Red Machine could do with that one. Maddie Fredella working against Christensen. Gets by her. Gets by Gilblair. Zoe Hislop. Hi. Moeller can't come up with that one. She's down. Looks like she might have hurt her foot on that one. Back up. Turn. Melanie Neal. Gets by Lefty Jeffrey. Gabri goes in. No whistle. That was a collision. The referee standing right there looking at the play. I guess he thought it was incidental contact. I don't know. I thought Allie might have gotten called on that. She really kind of threw the hip into her. And that was in the box. Yeah, I guess because she got to the ball before the, the offensive player did, then there's some leeway on that. we're seeing a referee come over and, oh, they're just switching sides, okay. I thought he was maybe coming over to have a word with Ellie, but they're just switching sides. The way his approach was one of like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to talk to you. McKenna Smith on the throw. Maddie Bartlett tries to get there. Joey Hill over on the far side, turn, goes up the sideline. Moeller ahead, Bartlett. Let's play to get it back in the middle. She's got room. Oh, nice pass. Moeller to Cochran. Cochran couldn't get the momentum going, though. Here comes Christensen, runs by. Nice turnaround by Chloe McIntyre. Christensen and McIntyre go out there. Gabbery. The Olympians just right there. <laughs> I don't know, Griff, is there an echo? <laughs> Olympians play are right there. They have, they have almost, I don't know, it's like they know where the ball is going. Gabri, big header, middle of the field. 
Emily Goosh back. Joey Hall up ahead. Trap down Olympians. Christensen. Nice move to get back. Maddie Bartlett tried to put a little screen in there for her. Shot down. Gilblair gives chase down here in the corner. That'll roll out. Macy's coming out for the first time, I think, this game. Looked like she got a little bit nicked on that one kick. And it's, when you go foot to foot like that, it's got to be, you know, a lot of torque there. Mm -hmm. It's got to hurt. Joey Hall on the goal kick. Gil Blair, near side, out of bounds, throw in, Olympians. <laughs> Subs coming in, Lily Castle for Michaela Gil Blair. Alexis Christensen goes off, and this is... Haley Ledoux. No, Maverick. Excuse me, I thought I saw seven. It's a two. Maverick Murphy. You know another great part of that movie, Griff? Mm -hmm. I think it was when they got out there to Top Gun and the first time they buzzed the tower and, you know, they're going in to really catch some crap and Goose says, hey, Maverick, you still got the pamphlet for that truck driving school? I think I want to be a truck driver. <laughs> Naval pilot. Yeah. Bartlett trying to make something happen here on the near side. She is the Spitfire. Maverick up to Bartlett. Oh, and Batow is in. There's Batow looking ahead, going or trying to get it over to Cochran. Played back, Maverick. No, that's not Maverick. That's I'm, I'm seeing Maverick in my sleep now. Stanchu, Gabriella, Stanchu. A little too hung up on Top Gun here. <laughs> I will do my best, Griff, not to bust out into a rendition of You've Lost That Love and Feel. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Fifteen fifty-five left to go in the match. Oxbow up one nothing off a goal by Grace Nostrand. Basically battled through the entire defense and uh, to get the one-on-one -on -one chance with the little red machine. And, and really, Emily didn't have much of a chance with that shot. See if the girls can bounce back. Nice block down, Lefty Jeffrey. Played up by Layla Ellsworth. Turn, McKenna Smith. Gets it over, there's a pass up ahead. Grace. Give me chase. Is that number six down there with Natalie? I want to say that is number... Our hair is in the way. Yeah, that is six, looks like. Aspen Longmore, if my program is correct, which according to Oxbow coach Dan Thomas was my new favorite girl's name. 
Aspen Longmore. Aspen. Cats looking to mount some form of offense here. Patel trying to make a move against Chloe McIntyre. Not happening. Over on the far side, Gabriella. Once again, Lance Hall with the call for HDTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hdtv.us. Griff on camera. We're coming to you from the Industrial, uh, the roof of the Industrial Arts Building here at Hazen Union High School. You're looking down at beautiful Hudson Fields. Our sponsors today, Willie's Store, 533-2621. Open every day, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I'll tell you, if you can't find it at Willie's, you don't need it. And the Hardwick Village Restaurant, open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Seven days, breakfast all day. And the breakfast is always stellar at the Hardwick Village Restaurant. Everything is stellar at the Hardwick Village Restaurant. Maverick. Throw in midfield. Moeller. Can't get through the defense. Here's the problem with pulling the defense way up. They chip over. Lefty Jeffrey. Plays it up through. Gabby. Turn around. Moeller. Nice break, oh, what a Cochran. Pass. Got had a step. Well, oh, boy, this girl can close fast. Cochran staying with her. Ellsworth right with her for the Olympians. Cochran to the outside. Lily Castle up. Lily Castle in. Back, Castle. Gets it up, Cochran breaks, can't quite get there. Jeffrey up, Maverick, nice pass over, nobody there. And Allie goes down in a collision with Grace. I mean, 10.35, a lot of time left, but it's not like we've had all that many opportunities. So really, uh, time, you gotta say, is almost sort of of the essence here. Yeah. I mean, you got to get at least one, even, even to tie it, obviously. Back in Kai. Kai Gilbert. It's like Oxwell has a radar for the ball. Murphy. Nice block down by Jeffrey. Ball rolls right by. Nobody there. Jeffrey once again. Down through. Zoe Hislop will try to make the play. Here comes an, an Olympian. Coming hard. Lily Castle. Out of bounds. White throw. Coach Dan, Dan Thomas making some changes here. Oh, 
Aspen in on offense now in the middle. Let's see if Moeller can give chase here. Emma Parkin back. Moeller battling with her, out of bounds, blue ball. Maverick Murphy on the throw in, looks at Moeller, gets it over, pitches in the middle, cleared out to the side. Murphy drops in. She was out of bounds when she kicked it, unfortunately. Lily Castle. Makes a play. Ball up. Hislop up to Gabri. Gabri trying to misdirect. I think she was looking for Moeller there in the middle. I mean, really, we've got Maverick, Maddie, Macy, and Kai up front. Speed and the ability to go to the net. 7.50 left to go in the game. The Olympians going to play keep away. Ball goes under the foot of Zoe Hislop. Pass here in the middle. Aspen comes out. Nice play. Nice play, Lily Castle, to get that up. Aspen was lining up for a shot. She was dead on. Ellen Hart. Lily's played tough back there today, as has Natalie, as has our entire defense. The entire defense has been tested for long periods of time here. Kai. She's double tough. Moeller. Turn around. Maverick here on the near side. Working against Ellsworth. That's uh, Parkin, I believe. Moeller puts on the left footer. Down to make the save is McKenna Simmons. That's the first quality shot I think we've we've gotten in a long, long time. Got the left foot on it. Had a nice angle, low and outside, but Simmons had the line the entire time. Need a couple more of those. Ooh, Kai! Turn around, Muller blocked. Wow, great defensive effort. Was that Parkin that got over there and sort of nudged that one aside? Uh, yeah, I believe so. 5.55 left to go here in the game. Blue corner. Moeller gonna take the corner. Maddie Bartlett right in the middle. Alexis Christensen in there. Maverick here on the near side. Kai over on the back side. Moeller up high. Ball up in the air, waiting, just waiting for anybody to come up there and grab it. Moeller works across the middle. Moeller wide. We can't say really as Simmons has really been tested other than that one bobble in the first half that she recovered nicely. Mm -hmm. Hasn't been really tested too much in this game yet. No, her defense has been able to handle most of it. I think we yeah. can say the same thing for Hazen too. And yeah. At least in the second half here, there was the one goal that got through, but really other than that, Emily hasn't been, had to handle much. Exactly. So both defenses playing very, very well here today. But Oxbow as a whole, I've got to say, has just seemed to have a, a nose for the ball. Kai over on the far side. Cross. Maverick Mer Moeller back. Maddie Bartlett. Why? I thought Maverick was going to have a shot at that for a moment, too. When that ball came across. 
Hazen offense yeah. comes alive here late. That was close to a goal in about three different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Number of opportunities. Muller takes that one down. Maverick trying to move it in. Lily Castle tries to get a foot on it, working against Hart. Kind of a white throw. Let's hope the Cats can stop this and get it back up here and get them a couple more shots on. Fredella gets it by Maverick. Joey Hall high in the air. Fredella down. Ball up high again. Joey trying to head it up. Three players there all trying to play it. Gabri goes down. She's back up. Three minutes left to go. Zoe with the boot back. Olymp Olympians still in control though. Two forty-five. Two thirty left to go in the game. Cats looking for the equalizer here. Tie this game up. Lily Castle, the freshman, has played extremely well, I think, this game. Mm -hmm. Blue throw. She's another girl that, you know, from those first couple games, you see the confidence, you see, you know, a little bit of experience, the skills come alive. Nice pass through, Moeller. Trying to get that one in. Simmons is going to come out and scoop it up. 145 left to go in the match. Back up ball, midfield, Christensen. Trying to play that one up. Bethany Conway, shoulder to shoulder with the Oxbow player. I think the Oxbow Olympians, at this point, just play keep away for another minute and 15. Cats are gonna have to get some kind of Serious run here to get this ball back up. One minute, there's Maddie Bartlett's. To get this ball up here to get any kind of uh, quality shot in on Simmons. Ball going back, Joey Hall up. Maddie Bartlett trapped down. Maddie Bartlett over, Gabbery gets the foot. Ball up through. Moeller knocks that one down. Working against Parkin. Moeller back. Cross middle. 30 seconds left. Maverick. Up through Maverick. Trying to get a foot on it again. Does back. Joey Hall. Chip up through. Was looking for Kai over on the far side. Christensen back. Conway. Going to get it up through. Cats desperate just to throw something on goal here. Ball up through again. Headed out. Defense there. 10 seconds. We're going to have to hurry. Maverick, middle of the field, drops it in amongst a quadrant of Olympians players. Two seconds, and that will end the game. And I'll tell you, our Lady Cats played a, a really, uh, once again, the Olympians came in with a record of 6 4 and 1. And uh, they're a big team. They, they uh, and, and big, I mean, in numbers. Um, they're, they're, they're tall, athletic girls as well. But uh, depth-wise as well, but uh, played them tough. We got that one goal down here by Grace Nostrant. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. To give Oxbow the 1-0 victory here. So, uh, Lady Cats, once again, we will be having senior night this coming Tuesday, October 15th, against Danville. I want to give our sponsors one more shout-out here today, the Willie's Store. 
in Greensboro, Vermont, as I am uh, trying desperately to get my sheet open back up here. 533-2621, open every day, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., and the Hardwick Village Restaurant, open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days, breakfast all day. Lance Hall with the call once again for HCTV Channel 16 on the local cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Griff on camera. We'll be back Tuesday night, eh, Griff? I believe so. We'll see everybody then. Bye-bye.